Hey, welcome to Board Game Casual, and today I'm giving you my thoughts on another game I recently played for the first time, Glow. I had never heard of this game and was introduced to it by a friend. In Glow, you're drafting companion cards, building a tableau of their benefits as you roll dice, all while making your way through the game board and trying to score the most points. It's a fun game, but not without its flaws. It's hard to talk about this game without first talking about the art. Generally speaking, black and white art can be a bit divisive. Typically, I'm not a fan. It's my least favorite thing in the game, Knit of Allier, for example. To me, the art in Knit of Allier looks like unfinished pencil sketches. And in a game where the character cards are the focus, I would prefer more color and depth. Glow, however, uses black and white in a much better way, at least in terms of the cards. The stylized art and the heaviness of the blacks work really well in my opinion. Unfortunately for the game board though, all the black and white just turns into a big blob. Although maybe it doesn't matter because the art is just a background to the actual colored icon spaces. I think the unfortunate small physical size of the board also doesn't help here. That brings me to my biggest issue with the game, the production of the board and wooden components. The cards in Glow are nice and big, dare I say oversized. They are very high quality and feel great in the hand. The custom dice look great, they, they feel good, the colors are pretty easy to distinguish from each other, and it's very easy to read the face value even on the smaller dice. But the game board and the wooden components feel like a total mismatch here. They are way too small. The wooden meeples are the smallest I've ever encountered and are a pain to pick up. The point markers are about the size of a children's Tylenol and go sliding with the smallest breeze or table bump. And for as small as these components are, they actually feel too big for how small they made the game board. The minute you put one meeple on a space, it totally covers up the symbol it takes to go there for the other players. And if there's more than one meeple on a space, they start bleeding into other tracks and other spaces, and you have to try to remember where the player token actually belongs. This seems like a huge misstep because, generally speaking, this isn't some huge board that needed to be reduced for table space. It seems awkwardly small for no reason. If the board and the components were made to the same scale as Architects of the West Kingdom, for example, it would still be a smaller board than Architects. I also think that mechanically, the game board is the weakest part of the game. As you move around the board, there are spaces that score points, but only if you have your camp token on it at the end of the game. So I don't understand why you would ever take the longer path with multiple point spaces over always taking the shortcut directly to the space that scores 20, especially since you only have one camp token and therefore can only score one space. Now the board does have a variant on the backside that I didn't get to play. It introduces some boat tokens and what looks like different mechanics, so maybe that side works a little better. I look forward to giving that one a try. Let's take a step back and talk about what I like most about the game. I really, really like this card and dice drafting mechanism, particularly how the dice are returned and set up for the next round. I think it's the most unique part of this game. In Glow, when you draft a card from a slot, you're also drafting the smaller dice that are paired with it. You get to use those dice on your turn, but afterwards they get returned to the market for the next round. The values you rolled and used determine which slot in the market they go back to for the next round. And in the event there's a slot with no dice, they get a movement token instead. That return system is really cool, and it keeps things exciting and dynamic because there can be so much variability in the market. And generally speaking, one of my favorite dice mitigation systems is simply having more dice to roll. So drafting a card that comes with a lot of dice feels really powerful and gives you a lot more opportunity to roll and trigger your powers. 
I also like that there are a lot of dice variations and their probabilities differ from each other. The color of the dice give you an idea of how likely they are to roll a certain value. Similar to the dice in Roll for the Galaxy, the game has some good mitigation in general. You can get powers or tokens that you can bank which let you re-roll dice or give you extra movement even if you don't roll the right symbol. So you never really feel stuck with your roll. The card powers are also very fun, making for some interesting choices when you're drafting, but also when you're triggering them because you can choose to resolve them in any order. Felt like a good variety of powers and starting characters as well. I was actually admiring the character my friend was playing across the table. She started with one less die than everyone else, but her dice had faces that could roll straight points, and her character allowed her to re-roll a die on every turn. The cards also give the game a good feeling of progression. Every draft, I'm feeling I'm getting something new I can add to my tableau, and I continue to feel more powerful with every round. As I mentioned, the production quality of the cards and custom dice are both top notch. Lastly, but certainly not least, turns are pretty snappy, the game plays at a good pace, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. Now let's talk about what I liked least about the game. As I mentioned earlier, the size of the wooden tokens are too small, and so is the game board. And mechanically speaking, the gameplay of the board is the weaker part of the game. To me, it would make a lot more sense if you could collect points along the way. Because now you'd have a strategy choice of taking the short path to the higher value slot, or taking the longer path, but adding up several smaller value spots. Or maybe having a mechanism that rewards more points for a player that arrived to a certain spot first. Then I'm choosing to be fast, or maybe I'm taking a different path so that I'm not behind another player. This was another weird one. None of the spell tokens actually seem to be a good thing. They all seem to be harmful rather than beneficial. So I'm not exactly sure why you would ever want to get a spell. They seem a lot more like curses. My buddy learned this the hard way in his first play, and now everyone just avoids these altogether because we don't see a benefit to them. Lastly, the rulebook isn't the greatest. There are parts that aren't very clear, and they could definitely use more examples and clarification. Final thoughts on Glow. This is a tough one because it feels like two halves made by different people that don't match. I really, really like one half, but unfortunately the other half is bringing it down. In terms of rating, overall, based on my play, I'm giving Glow a 7. It's a fun game, and I really like the card and dice system. The engine building is fun, it has just enough dice mitigation, it's really exciting when you roll the right face values to activate your powers, and I love the way the dice are returned to the market setting up for the next round. But the issues with the production, like the game board and the token size, and honestly the gameplay of the board itself, keep me from being able to give it a higher score. That said, I found the game to be really fun. A 7 is a good score. I don't think it's a game I personally am going to go seek out and buy, but I'll happily play it again. I'm lucky my buddy has a copy, and I'm really looking forward to trying the other side of the board with the ship tokens. If you've played Glow, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments, or by all means, let me know if I'm missing something. Thanks for watching, thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.